say offensive, air offensive by the Israeli um, defense forces. And he'll be giving us his insights and stories tonight into what <coughs> ordinary Palestinians experience during this time. We are now pleased to welcome Samir. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Peace upon all of you. To be honest, the first eight, nine days before the war started, it was just like a dream. Like seeing my family and having fun, like seeing the places, like it's my country, I haven't seen it for a long time, it was just a pleasure. But like two nights before the war, I was talking to my one of my nieces, I haven't seen her ever. And she was studying on dark, like we don't have power there every day. Uh, the electricity there in like in Gaza city I live in really good area in Gaza and we're supposed to have good service better than other campus or refugees campus in Gaza we have power there only for eight or nine hours a day sometimes you get the power when you are sleeping so when you get up in the morning you don't have power you don't have anything just like quiet in the night time sometimes we don't have Power. Most of the most of the weekdays we don't have. Most of the weeknights we don't have power. So kids, when they have exams or they come back from school and they have to study or do homework, they study on candles. Or I watched. I was. I saw my niece putting the light like this in her shoulder, and she was writing, finishing her homework. And I was just looking at her and shocked. I can't say anything. I can't even tell her, tell her, I can't tell her, wait till the morning because she wants to study, have dinner, sleep for next day to go to school. Then I asked her one day, what do you want to do when you finish or what do you want to study? She said, uh, I want to be a, plas um, a surgeon, plastic surgeon. Then my thought was, was really silly. I told her, oh, so you want to do like plastic surgery, cosmetic surgery for people? She looked at me like, are you dumb? Like, but she didn't say it. But she looked at me like laughing and said, no, I want, to help, I, I want to help people injured in the war who had no faces or they need to replace anything in their faces or their body to, to make them look good again. And I, was, I felt like this in front of this girl. She's 12 or 13 years old. Her mindset, her thinking, her way of thinking, and I'm his ankle, her ankle, how I was thinking. Then, when the war started, on the day when was the, when the war started, I was at my sister place, which was uh, like gathering after school time. It was last day of exams, and everyone is happy, planning for weekends, going barbecue, going to the beach, all this stuff. And just suddenly, we hear this bang around us, and people start calling each other, and I was looking. What's going on? And it's like messages, mobile calls. And I told my, I remember it was my, one of my nephew. I told him what's going on. He said there's bombings, bombs and rockets in Gaza City, in, in the center of the city. I said, what for? He said, well, this is our life here. So I said, so what, what, to, what to do now? He said, nothing. Everyone goes home. Just find, like, find your son, your kids, your wife, your brother, your sister, and just go home. I never seen in my life panic like this, people running around to grab their stuff and to be sure their kids around them, their family around them, like the very close, close family. And everyone just going to his home to be sure everything, and at least to hide in a safe place. I was staying in my brother's house, and second day he told me we have to give each one responsibility to plan ourselves in case anything happened. I was responsible of supplying water because we don't have fresh water and uh, where we live. My nephew was uh, my nephew was responsible of supplying bread, milk, and basic food. My brother, he's older than me, he was responsible about safety, like all of us. Of course, my sister, my sister-in-law, responsible about the kids and be sure that everything in order and in case any, if we've been injured or our house being destroyed, be sure everything is ready to run away. We never slept in pajamas. We were sleeping like this. In our clothes, everything is on us. Just in anything happen, if anything happened, 
we run away. Um, if you want to know how we were sleeping, this is the sounds we were sleeping on every night. Every night we are hearing this. Every night we don't know this this sound will be next neighbor or it will be in our head. You can't sleep. You can't. One night my sister asked me, did you pray? We were going to bed to sleep. And she asked, she asked me, did you pray? I looked at her and said, but the prayer time is finished. She said, no, you have to pray before you go to bed because maybe you will not wake up again. And I was just like, I couldn't, I, I couldn't say anything to her. This is how the camera was shaking. And it wasn't the only camera, the whole building. And then what we do, we just try to find where, where was the rocket, just to be sure, is it close to our, any of our families? Where was the bomb, just to be careful, like, in case my uncle house, my friend's house, and start calling people. Are you safe? Are you okay? Oh, eight days we were living on this. Eight days, just waiting for the next rocket, where it's gone, where it's coming from. The most, the most scary one where I felt we are going to die, it was two times. Like I felt, okay, this is, it's the end. And there is nothing after that. See this here, the rocket's there. This area here. I took this picture um, from, well, we are building like there, we are rebuilding our house, like apartment levels, five, five levels, and we were at the top. Unfortunately, we, the labor, the, we have to do something about the concrete stuff there, and if it hasn't been done on that day, the, the apartments could collapse or it affects the infrastructure there. So this job must be done on that day, on that time. Otherwise, the apartments will fall apart. Anyway, we were there since morning with the, the contractors and people working there. I was serving them food and drinks just to finish quickly and go home. And everyone feels we just like we are scared for two, three hours, and we're saying we have to finish quickly. There will be a rocket very soon and very close to us. The rockets were full there, and I remember I was like, like I've been pushed back a little bit, and I couldn't hear maybe for 10 seconds, I couldn't hear anything, and I was just looking around, I want to know if my brother is safe or not. Luckily all of us we were safe, but we didn't stay after that of course, and we just hide till it's finished, and then we took that pictures and we went home. This is my sister's voice. She's t she was terrified. We thought it's our uncle home. Uh, this home was for a Hindu family. It's a three stories house. 35 members of one family died in one second at this time. 35 people at this time just gone. Kids, families, all elderly. They, they, Israel later on they claimed the Hamas fighters, they were there. They were nothing. Al Hilo family is a big family in, in, in Palestine. Some of them were from uh, working for Hamas, some of them for Fatah. But in, that, in, that, in the house, at that time, there was only kids, fam a woman, and elderly people. 35 people of one family just gone. Because Israel said, oh no, the Hamas fighters, they were hiding there. My sister crying, crying. Don't know what to do. Then my brother said, oh, I'm going to go down go to the street to help. I said, You are not going out anywhere. We we'll just wait for at least five, ten minutes. And then we all went out to, to help the victims there or to move the bodies. And this one here, it was 6 a.m. 
I don't remember I jumped on my life like this time. It was everywhere in our neighborhood. It was six, around 6 a.m. everywhere. You can see the cars and hear the cars. It was like bang, 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 continuous for almost one minute. I never jumped in my life like this. I was just running around all in the house, just asking what's happening. I keep going, going and going. And then I just turn it off and hide again. Can't do anything. Uh, my brother has a business there, just like normal office. We were at home around 9.30, 10 o'clock, uh, evening, night time. My brother received a call from his neighbor and at the, the office area telling him come here immediately there was a rocket beside uh, your office and all doors smashed everything's like you have all doors and windows <coughs> and the walls down and you have to come just to secure your office and if there's any valuable things to take it away then my brother just jumped and he wanted to go and we can hear the bombs around us and I said I asked him where are you going he said this is what's happening, and I'm going to the office. I said, well, it's like 40 minutes walking. No buses, no taxis at that time. No one is going to drive when the rocket is happening. And they told him, well, it's like 40 minutes walking. You're not going at this time. Wait for tomorrow. He said, no, I'm not waiting. I said, OK, I'll come with you. We just jumped. At the street, I was like walking quickly. I'm trying to run so to save more time, because we, you can hear the rockets everywhere. And it could hit you any time. And my brother told me, don't run, don't walk fast, and don't even walk beside the walls. Walk in the middle of the street. Because if you are trying to run or trying to hide, all the cameras or the planes, they will think you are, you are carrying weapons or something. So just walk in the middle of the street. I said, this is insane. So they can see you. He said, yeah, they can see you, but, and they can know that you are not carrying anything in your body, any, any weapons with you, on you and they will let you go. 40 minutes going, 40 minutes coming back, it just something, the feelings there, you cannot, you cannot explain it. And when, when the rockets is around, around you, you we, we literally we jump. We hold hands, me and my brother, we hold each other hands and we just, you can't run, you want to run, you are scared. I want to run, but no, I can't because I'm scared if I run. So we were just holding hands and keep walking. We arrived there. The rockets there hit um, a Palestinian, young Palestinian guy who was driving a, a motorbike. And the rockets just hit, hit him in the middle. The ambulance came. They took part of his body, of course. They couldn't take everything. We secured the office. We were leaving, me and my brother, with the neighbors. Of course, the neighbors helped us. And there was a bloody cat in the street eating. And I, I, I didn't think about it. And I saw my brother and the other guy walking there. They moved the cat, and they tried to clean the area. I told them, what are you doing? They said, you idiot. This is where the Palestinian young guy being injured. And we think this is part of his body. The cat was eating him. This is, this is what we, like even you, you don't have service or the, you don't have ambulance to come and help take the injured people, take them to the hospital. Just normal people, they jump, take you, they put you in their car and they run to the hospital. We were cleaning his blood. We were cleaning a human being's blood. We were moving his small pieces of flesh and we put it in small container we put it aside we, we did I, I didn't know what I don't know what they have done with that after, after that but it's something you cannot explain and you cannot you cannot you, you don't want to feel it again or live it again um, and then again we have to walk 40 minutes back to home when I was when we were walking back my brother told me you shouldn't come with me you should stay home I said no I'm supposed to be with you. I'm helping you. He said, no, because if I didn't make it going back home, you are home taking care of my kids and my family. 
this is what my brother told me, like, you should stay there because if I'm that, if I'm being killed, you are there to take care of my family. This kind of, of feelings, we live there every day, every hour. My nephew lost too many friends, and they are all, yeah, like 18, 19 years old. After the war finished, I thought I, oh, I'm strong enough to record everything and talk to the streets, I talk to the people in the street, and talk to the families there. But I wasn't. I, I couldn't do it. I was. I went with my brother driving around, like to take, trying to take more movies to do documentary to do something like this here. But I was surprised. I couldn't do it. I couldn't talk to people there because I'm one of them. I felt. Instead of doing this, I want to help them more. Instead of wasting my time and their time talking or filming them, no. I just threw the camera and I was just helping people, cleaning up, uh, moving. Uh, we're just doing anything for them. Anything they ask, we did for them. I went through like just few ones. Like I, I couldn't go more. That was here, all these buildings, offices, uh, apartments, people living there. It's all gone. As you see the water in the road, that's why we don't have water, fresh water. Every time we rebuild the infrastructure to have fresh water in the apartments, every time, sorry, every time we will have a war, everything destroyed, and we cannot rebuild it again. We relied on other countries to give us support to rebuild, and we, we build the country or we build part of the damages Two, three years, and Israel launched another campaign or another war against us, and we lose people and infrastructure. I don't care about the infrastructure, we lose people. We don't have security, we don't have safety, till now, till this moment. Yeah, I'm talking to you now, and everyone think it's safe there. It's not. Even if there is no war there, and they have the ceasefire. After 48 hours, after the ceasefire, Israel broke the ceasefire and killed two Palestinians. What ceasefire? What peace they are talking about? War well, negotiation, sorry, the peace negotiation has started 20 years now, since 1990, 1991. Till now, we didn't do anything. We didn't achieve anything. Peace negotiation have, has nothing done. And more wars, we are losing lands in West Bank. We are losing homes in Jerusalem. We are losing people. And just keep going on and on and on. Any time I'm here living, enjoying, I'm talking to you, and every night I'm scared to receive a phone call from my family there telling me we lost your brother or we lost your sister or anyone of our family. It's every day living. So, yeah, this is, and we're proud to be Palestinian. This is Palestinian, the normal, basic, simple Palestinian life, but we are proud to be Palestinian. And we are alive, we are not dead, and I'm sorry for Israel, but they think they will, they will take over, but I'm sorry for them, they will not. So, yeah, thank you.